from the body language, I could still see that uh, there was no reception. Now, when he retorted, when he came back, he says, uh, we know who you are, and uh, we've been told that you're coming here. Uh, we, we, we've also heard about uh, the, the movement uh, uh, for human rights uh, that has taken the case in the High Court, uh, ostensibly on our behalf. But um, we have to tell you this, we do not want to. And uh, we're really taken aback because um, our expectation uh, was that uh, we would receive uh, a lot of warm reception, uh, having uh, stopped a decision by government uh, to deport uh, these football players back to uh, their country of origin, the Eritrea, to face the wrath of that government. Uh, and uh, we then engaged them. By then, the time must have been around 9 a.m. We started engaging them. We uh, used every trick of persuasion in the book uh, to try to convince these individuals that we meant good for them. Uh, that um, we were, in fact, fighting from that corner. Uh, that uh, the cause uh, that uh, the human rights movement was pursuing was a cause designed to protect uh, the human rights. But they said, uh, look, um, the government officials have been here, and uh, they are saying that uh, they are processing our application for asylum in this country, and that the only stumbling block for the expediting of this process uh, is um, the human rights movement, as well as their lawyers. Uh, they say that um, they have been made to believe uh, that the date that was set by the court, that is the 11th December 2015, as the status hearing of the Lobazai High Court case, was in fact uh, the designed by the lawyers uh, to prolong and delay the application uh, for uh, asylum seeking uh, in Botswana. And for that reason, uh, they did not want uh, anything to do with uh, the human rights movement. They did not want anything to do with the lawyers. Uh, because um, from the information that they received from the officials, um, accepting the human rights movement as well as the lawyers uh, would simply a result in that case being prolonged, and meanwhile, they would uh, simply rot uh, in that uh, illegal immigrant facility at Francis Town. And to them, it was really something too hard to countenance. And so we, we realized that uh, we had a, a bigger problem ahead of us. Uh, we engaged them, uh, we tried to sensitize them on uh, the importance of representation, uh, we tried to uh, convince them on the motivation behind uh, the court order uh, that directed that we access them so that uh, we could um, advise them of their rights. They said to us, uh, now with that explanation, uh, we are even uh, much more confi uh, confused uh, because the uh, government is saying one thing and you are saying the other thing on the other hand. So the only thing that uh, we are able to uh, able to penetrate them is when we ask them if they know why uh, the court action had been brought. Uh, apparently they did not. They did not know why uh, it was necessary to institute an urgent court application on behalf of the movement. Uh, so we said to them the reason why uh, we did that is because the minister had made a public pronouncement on radio uh, that um, you were due for immediate deportation, and that the only thing that um, was delaying the deportation exercise was because the ambassador from your country uh, had um, defaced your passports by punching holes through them, uh, and that um, now arrangements were being made for you maybe to be furnished with um, temporary travel documents for your deportation to Eritrea. They knew very well uh, that uh, the ambassador had punched holes uh, through that passport. We also pointed out to them that uh, we were a very important liaison uh, between them who are uh, in detention and the outside world, particularly their families. And in fact, we, uh, for three years, we, we had um, the email communication um, that we had um, entered into uh, with um, 
Jota, members of the families, the uh, sisters and the brothers uh, who are uh, you know, around in the diaspora. And we showed them, uh, you know, the, that in their communication. Uh, one touching thing was um, you know, communication from uh, the sister uh, of the Eritrean football team goalkeeper. I caught it by them. By them, we didn't even know that means they had not even introduced themselves to us. I caught him by name because his name was in one of the email communications that I had. And I said, your sister, uh, who is um, in the Netherlands, uh, is worried about you. And that is how the ice then was broken. Because he didn't know how I got to know his name. And we presented to Hanok and uh, the email communications. He let them out. And um, they then uh, started um, uh, interacting. They started speaking uh, in that language. And um, ultimately, they then said, uh, you know, and that was how I'm saying. He says, uh, the team says that uh, they have watched you. They have seen, um, you know, your facial expressions, your countenance. They've seen uh, the way you communicate, uh, the way uh, the easiness with which you communicate, the way you smile and laugh to them. And that um, something tells them that um, they can trust you. And for that reason, they are accepting you. And so uh, we then sat down and uh, were worried that uh, the officials could have communicated with them and uh, sent to them a message uh, to that effect. So we then set out to debrief them, particularly on that aspect, because uh, the timing uh, of that interaction that they had had uh, with authorities was very, very important because uh, if, that, if that communication had been made uh, before uh, the court order was obtained, perhaps uh, it could be said that the authorities uh, did not know what they were doing and we thought maybe that was uh, in the best interest of the football players uh, to have approached them in the manner in which they did. If, on the other hand, uh, that interaction took place after the court order, then it would have been really contemptuous uh, of the high court order. Uh, it would have been just a cloak and dagger uh, tactic on the part of the authorities. So we first uh, sought to ascertain when uh, the authorities approached them. Uh, from what they told us, on Sunday, the night of Sunday, 18th October uh, 2015, at least five uh, number uh, of individuals uh, came to them. And uh, these people uh, came with uh, an interpreter by the name of Mike. He was simply introduced to them uh, as Mike. Mike uh, fluently spoke um, the that language. And uh, Mike was the one who was interpreting communication uh, by these officials, these people who introduced themselves as government officials uh, to asylum seekers. Uh, according to the officials, uh, that narrative uh, that uh, the lawyers were delaying that case and that uh, they were brought in that facility uh, if they accept the lawyers and uh, the human rights movement uh, was presented. Um, and obviously, uh, they said, look, if uh, the effect of accepting the lawyers uh, is that um, you know, our asylum seeking process is going to be delayed and that we are going to be kept um, you know, for a prolonged period of time in this facility, then uh, we do not want those lawyers. We do not want the human rights movement. And uh, at that point, Mike then said, the officials want you to write letters, uh, declarations, committing yourself to that position. And that uh, those declarations have to be in your language. And that is exactly what they did. Uh, they then wrote in that language, um, you know, what uh, the authorities wanted. So they were worried that uh, having committed themselves in writing, um, was it going to be acceptable for them to now appear to be emerging uh, from that position? 
So we explain to them that uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, the, approach, the approach made by the authorities, by those officials, uh, was untoward, uh, it was unlawful, it was contemptuous of the court order, and that um, you know it was something that we had to take the authorities on about. And then at that point, they then agreed uh, to give us a handwritten mandate, uh, which we have, uh, authorizing us to act on that behalf. Uh, in addition, in that uh, authorization, they expressly stated that uh, they were revoking uh, the undertaking they had made to the government officials on the night of Sunday. And then after that, we decided to uh, take up the matter with uh, the deputy officer commanding uh, of the center. So we went, to, we went back to superintendent police and uh, we called uh, Anok to uh, also uh, be there uh, so that uh, Superintendent Mudisa could get it from the horse's mouth. And uh, Hanok narrated that audio. Um, and um, you know, it really surprised uh, Superintendent Mudisa. He's a very experienced uh, you know, officer in the prison's department. And uh, the Botswana prison's department, and that I can vouch for them, uh, really uh, uh, you know, respect the rights of individuals who are in their care and custody uh, to legal representation.